Well, hello everybody. Here comes our final video for our wonderful experience together. And this one is going to be uh, flora that you can use in a landscape. I'm going to show you how you can use the techniques of stippling, dry brush, shading, and wet into wet, and maybe a little glazing to create trees and grasses. And then I'll show you some examples where people have expanded on this uh, example I'm going to show you. <clears throat> so now what I'm going to do is put the camera above my work and then we'll get started. Trying to get it right in the middle there. Okay. Maybe back just a little bit more. Okay, great. So let's see if you can see. Yes, okay. So you either want to use your block watercolor or tape your paper down. And the first thing we're going to do is lightly draw in. This is going to be just a tree using techniques that we know. And you will see how you can translate this into more trees, more flora. So I'm going to start with making a trunk right in the middle of the paper because this is a warm-up, this is a practice, and I'm lightly drawing a vertical line, so light, up to the top of the paper, and I'm going to start about an inch apart at the top, but as I slowly come down the other side, I'm slowly widening my trunk, so there's a gradual widening as it reaches the ground because of course trees narrow very gradually as the trunk moves up and now I'm going to use shading and making the bark of the tree so let's say this side is away from the sunlight and our light source is over here so I'm going to start with a brown now you well I'm going to try to show you the color mixing I've got a brown mixed up here and I'm going to add a little bit of yellow into that brown. And I'm going to add a little dab of blue into that brown because I want it to be kind of a gray bark. And maybe a little bit more brown into that color I've mixed. And I'm going to test the color on my scrap of paper and I want it to have a little more pigment in that than that. I want it to still be transparent, but since it's going to be the shadow side, okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to start going up the left-hand side of my tree with the bark. Now I'm going to take my brush and dip it into water and add no more paint because I'm going, and I'm going to dab my brush just a little bit, but I'm going to take my wet brush and I'm going to gradually go up this line and I'm rubbing the watercolor so it's shaded. So it's going from dark to light over towards the sunlight. I'm dipping my brush back in the water again and I'm adding more, <clears throat> excuse me, more water. I still want it to that's a little bit too transparent and light. So I'm going to pick up a little bit of the brown over here and add it as I go up the tree. I'm trying to see if this is something I'm hoping you're getting all of this in the video. Double check in the video. It looks like it is there. Okay, good. And I actually think that the, the left-hand side of my tree needs a little more pigment. So I'm adding a little more pigment to my brush and experimenting. Yeah, that looks good. And I'm going to put a little more on that left-hand side because I want it darker. So now I've got a tree with a little bit of shading here using water for shading. Okay, that works for me. Now I'm going to do something that's going to be a little bit uh, dramatic because I don't, I want to have parts of the leaves of the tree will be completely covering the bark. So what I'm going to do is I just took this paper towel and I dipped it into water and I squeezed the water off and I'm opening up that paper towel 
and I'm going to blot the tree to remove some of the painting because my leaves I'm going to get some of that off that right there. Yeah, that's I want my leaves to cross over the trunk and the trunk not to show so much because there are parts when you're looking at a tree you do not see the trunk of course because there's such a mass of leaves so I'm doing that and now I am done with preparing my tree now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my wide brush put it in clean water and I'm glad I tested this on I just tested this over here on my towel I've got where I'm laying my brushes and there was a little bit of blue in that brush still so I'm gonna I want clear water and I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to apply a just a very light coat of water because I'm going to add blue to my sky and I want it to be able to, I don't want it on there solid I want it to spread just a little bit so this is wet paint on wet paper so we've done shading and now wet paint and I'm going to use between my blues I'm deciding to use the phyllo blue which is right here and I'm gonna test it to see how dark it is okay it's a little dark but we're gonna see what happens now this is not how you want your sky you'll see what happens in a minute you see how it's spreading because there's water there so I'm going to dab on the blue then I'm going to clean my brush and I'm going to take it and push the blue around the paper so it has a feeling of clouds and sky. I am pushing my brush. If you remember, I should add, that's another technique. I'm pushing the brush, but only loaded with water against the blue I've added. Now I need to work fast here, and if it ends up drying, I can just add more water. There's the good news about watercolor. And I'm giving this, there's my sky behind my tree. All right, that's working out. All right, now I'm going to dab a little bit at the bottom because the next thing I'm going to do is add the grasses at the bottom, and I want to make sure this is you can see this. Okay, I'm tilting the camera just a little bit because I want you to see what I'm going to do with dry brush right here at the bottom. So I'm going to take my brush. If you remember this technique, you can either have a fan brush or you can use your own brush. So I'm cleaning my brush. It's clean. I'm taking it and I'm squeezing the water out of the brush. And I've got the bristles for dry brush. I'm separating it. And I'm going to dip this into, actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use another brush because I like what my uh, <clears throat> bristles are doing here. I'm going to take a second brush and mix up a little more yellow. I thought I had enough yellow mixed up, but I don't. So right now I'm taking yellow and I'm adding it over here to the side on my mixing palette. Getting right much. And I'm going to dip those bristles into the brush remember I'm trying to keep those bristles stiff because I'm going to do dry brush with my yellow for grasses at the bottom now that's not showing so much right now but it will it'll work I'm now not only using dry brush but I'm going to glaze these colors together so I've got you can barely see it but I've got dry brush yellow now I'm going back to bristles and I'm going to take my other brush wet my green I've mixed up again because I want it I just realized it dried because it's so hot I took this brush and added more water to my green to make it liquidy and I'm going to tip those bristles into the wet paint and now I'm going to do dry brush and it isn't dry enough so I'm just dry I just dried it off again on a paper towel I got a, almost a, just a stroke of green and I don't like it and that's fine I'm gonna stop and dry my brush get my bristles back and here we go okay that's what I wanted with the green for a grass is growing in front of the tree grass is growing in a meadow if I was doing a meadow I would start with 
this is kind of there we go that's good now I'm going to let that oh that's nice effect there and I'm going in front of the tree now I've got a nice dry brush there I want something different I'm gonna add out some of the grass has died so I've mixed together my brown from my tree and the yellow and I'm gonna go over it with a brown so I'm glazing and using dry brush what I mean by glazing is I'm painting colors on top of colors I'm angling my brush different ways because grasses all don't grow in the same direction. And now I'm going to do one final, taking my dry brush again, and I'm going to get a really intense green and just barely go over. I've now got four different colors glazed for my grasses, okay? Okay, so here we go. I've got everything done now but the leaves. So now I'm thinking you can do fall with warm colors, orange, yellows, and reds. I want to do a, a kind of a summer tree. So I'm going to dip into the green. And I'm going to start with some dark leaves because they're going to be in the shadow. And I'm stippling. Now right where that bald spot is on my tree, I'm going to do a little more intensely with leaves. Here's what you don't want to do. You don't want to make a ball of color. You want it to be random leaves. You can see what I'm doing. It's getting some here, because there'll be maybe branches there. I'm stippling green. It's a dark green. You can see it's actually running a little bit where my paper was wet for the sky, and I like it. You could have let yours dry. I can't do that, because I can only have to do this in a 15 minute video. I'm really kind of feeling it. Now stop stopping. I'm gonna clean my brush. I'm going to get yellow and mix it with a green. And uh, here I am picking up yellow and mixing it with the green, cleaning my brush before I go into that yellow or I'm gonna have a yellow green. Okay, here we go. Got nice, and I'm gonna stipple light green onto that dark green. Now the dark green is like shadows. Sits, put some randomly that where there's not clumps of leaves. And I think I want to go for one more color of green on my tree. So I'm going to mix up a new green that's not like the other greens, and I'm using my, uh, well, I don't have to use a dry brush. I'm really stippling, and I've got yet another, I'm now kind of glazing colors. I've got kind of a bluish green that goes on top of that. Now here's the deal. You're gonna let yours maybe dry in between. The blending is kind of nice. You can see with each time I add more stippling, the tree, and I'm going to let some of these leaves just go off the paper. This tree is not completely in the paper, just like with a photograph. Sometimes you cut off the edges. And finally, I'm going to take my brown from my bark. And I'm going to show you that. I'm just going to mix it here in the color, and I'm going to test it. I want it to be pretty light, so I'm testing it, and that's too dark, because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do here. That's kind of fun. Just watercolor is pretty pretty cool. Let's test it till it's okay. I'm just gonna show some random little branches coming through. I mean barely showing. Real you know how I'm getting these thin lines? I'm taking my brush and I'm holding it right up on the end, like I call it a ballerina brush. You cannot see all the branches, you see parts of them between the leaves. And that's it. There's a pretty nice tree. Now, I'm gonna show you what people have done with this. Students who've given me their work. Here is someone from, um, you can stop and look at that, pause. You know that you can do that anytime. Here is one a student did. I really think this is amazing. They stippled almost with the, it looks, you know, sometimes you can stipple and the, and the shape becomes like a V and they added these colors they stopped their trunk earlier and did uh, the leaves and then painted their branches through there. Isn't that 